Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to use uh, a persistent file storage in Android. I'm going to use the secure file location and I'm going to write out adjacent documents. Uh, my program is going to take the existing Hello World app that's given to you by .NET Malware when you run it and just going to write out some diff inf information, information. What I've added to it are these two labels or four labels. I have clicks this run, clicks last run, and when I run this thing and I start doing these clicks, I'm going to make this persistent so that the number of clicks I hold on to is from this particular run and the last runs. So I'm going to keep an overall running total. Kind of like cookie clicker if you've ever played that game on the internet. So right now, it just does that. I stop and I run. I want the number of clicks I had last time to appear down here and I want this to keep counting persistent not just restarting each time okay so I'm going to create a model over here my persistent storage so I'm going to add a model new folder I'm calling it models I'm going to add a new class I'm going to call that class hello clicker You should always use a class to store your data, especially if you have more than two pieces to it. Just much simpler than trying to track multiple variables. I'm going to make that class public. I'm going to use my prop. Prop allows me to very quickly create those. I typed in prop and hit tab tab. I'm going to do two more. So total current last. I'm going to build some constructors, quick actions and refactorings. I'm going to generate a constructor. I'm going to do one that's the parameterized one, takes all three of them, and I'll do the default one, set them all to zero. I may not use them, but it's really good practice to get into creating a constructor. And I'll just set these three to zero. I know that it's overkill, but it's good overkill to get into. Okay, so now we're going to modify the code behind to use this. I could have done this full MVVM. I'm trying to keep it simpler. So I'm going to go to the code behind the main page. I'm going to keep a lot of this and just change it as it goes forward. But I'm going to add in my class. I'm going to add in a new variable. It's all public. Name my class. I'm going to use HC. This guarantees to call my constructor. I can also put get and set there, but I'm not going to use a get and set. I'm just going to simply use this variable. In my on counter clicker that I have, I'm going to comment some existing code and modify it. So I'm not going to use your count plus plus anymore. I'm going to use HC. So I'm adding to the turns. And instead of displaying count here with the bind, I'm going to display total. And then I'm going to use that current object. Okay, to kind of prove that my model's working, let's go back to my model for a minute. And rather than set the zero, Let's do some values here, okay? Whoops. That happens whenever you're adding stuff quickly. Whenever you add a model to your project or any type of folder in the project, it can take a lot longer to build. So, soon not 11, the numbers are adding up. I need some spacing down here but it's working.
Okay, so now I see that it works. I'm gonna set these back to zero. I'm now gonna write to the file. I'm gonna add a couple usings. So I'm going to page XAML and add some usings up here. System.io, IO of course is input output. I use the built-in system text JSON as my deserializer. It works, it's easy, it's free, it's fast. No sense not using it. All right, so back in my code behind, we're going to create some objects, some new variables. So private string file name, I'm going to use that to write out to my disk. Okay. And this file name is going to have a particular location. I'm going to write the file system. And we're going to use app data directory. All operating systems have, at least for mobile, have some type of storage for the app. Uh, this is a secure storage. So I'm going to add it to it the name of this file. So this will create my file. This will create my file for me on Android. This will create my file for pretty much anywhere I want it to go. So now inside of this class, I'm going to add a function that writes. I'm going to async it because I don't know how long it's going to take. I cannot type today. Um, public async void write to file. And since I've made my file name global, I'm going to use that. Um, it's async because, like I said, we don't know how long this could take. We're going to serialize the JSON and we're going to serialize HC over to here. If you've never used a serialize before, what it does is it goes through and converts my class into a JSON document. My guess is if you're here at this point, you've seen JSON. I'm going to write all text to my file name and write out the right data. Okay, so this will write out the disk as JSON. And I'm going to call this the end of my counter click. Now, what I'm doing here is a pretty cool trick. I know that my program needs a file, so I'm writing before I read. This will cause me the problems of trying to figure out how to create the file and how to upload it. I'll do that in a separate video, but for now, I'm just going to make it simple. So I'm going to add this to the bottom here. I'm going to write to my file. I'm going to run this on my Android emulator. This could take a moment to file up, so I'm going to pause while this runs. All right, so it's up and running. Uh, first time I pull this up, so I'm going to hit the buttons here. No errors. If there was an error with the file, it would have yelled at me right here. So I've written out the file, and you see now I've clicked four times. You'll see, the, or five times. You see clicks this run, appears down here with a five. I still need some spacing in there. So I'm going to stop this, and then we're going to write, file, or write the code to read from the file, and we're going to update these numbers down here. So I'm going to stop the program. Keep my emulator up and running though. That's always the right thing to do. I'm going to create a new function called read file. Again, it'll be async because I don't know how long this takes. Essentially, whenever you are going to do something that's external to your app that you don't control, like reading from the internet or reading from a file, you want to async it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable to read in from the file. I'm going to use hello clicker again. I'm 
I'm gonna check to see if the file exists. If it does not, I'm gonna die. Um, which means I won't re try to read through the files. So this, this is a clever way to make you have to write this thing out first. If the file does exist, I'll move on from here and I'm gonna read it. Now the file is written out in JSON. I could dig through the Android app and find it, but there's no need to because I'm gonna just convert it from JSON into text. So I wrote up by gonna read all text, excuse me. I'm gonna read from the file name. So that'll read everything into raw data. I used a var there because I'm not sure what's there. I mean, I know it's string, but if you're not sure what's there, just pull it on the raw data and then convert it from there. We're gonna convert read HC from that raw data into the class. The raw data will be JSON, so we're gonna use our deserializer. In all programming environments, you have a deserializer or a serializer. Um, in Java, it's called Jackson, there's a Google one. Every environment has one, just learn what it is. They do the same thing. They convert JSON into a class. And I put this in the wrong place. There we go. That's correct now. Why are you yelling at me? Oh, okay. That's why I use the wrong class. So Jason serializer dot deserialize hello clicker raw data. Read HC will now be a class that has the numbers in it that we just wrote out. I'm going to set HC to this. The last thing I wrote the file with the current was the last time I clicked it. So current was the last time I ran it. So I read current into HC last. I haven't clicked anything yet, so I said equal to zero. And now I'm going to update my screen immediately. And I'm going to take this line of code I have here. I'm going to assume I clicked it more than one time. I'm not deal with that if statement we had done there. Current click label dot text is going to be equal to zero or hc dot current. And then last click label. It's apparently named it poorly. It wants me to string this apparently. Okay, so read file. And that actually should be read from file, not read to file, read from file. So my async function called read from file creates a variable of type read, hello clicker. Reads the data in, converts it from JSON into just a class. I then put that into my HC class so I can reuse this. I didn't reuse HC because I didn't want to get confused between two objects. I display it and I'm going to call it here in call it my constructor. Okay, I'm going to run this in emulator. Again, I'm going to pause it. All right, it's back up. We can see the last time I ran it, I did click it five times. You should remember that. I'm going to click it a couple more times here. So now run it 15 times, 10 times this time, five last run. I'm gonna reset that. And the number should have stayed. There they are. 15 times, 10 last time, zero this term. All right, so at this point, you know how to write out the file. You don't have to use JSON like I did, but I like JSON, it's a good way to store data and it's easy to work with. A lot simpler than trying to remember what line stuff is on and convert it over.
Um, so if you want to learn more, Microsoft Learn has some really good examples of how to write the different file locations. Um, in another video, I've already written out using the persistent file settings, the preferences, and in a future video, I'll write out the database. Thank you all for watching and good luck.